June, Joan and I went to visit the land of Togo. And there's no use mentioning Togo without telling people where it is, because hardly anyone knows. So there's a map of Africa here. And Togo, I need a little stick. Here. <laughs> I need a stick, yes. It's this little arc right here, this little vertical pink country. Here's uh, Ghana to the left, Nigeria to the right. And by the way, the Ebola virus is over here, so <laughs> a few hundred miles away, as the uh, Nigerian crisis was several hundred miles to the east. Togo's the smallest country in Africa, and why on earth would anyone go to visit there? For quite a few years, John and I have been active with People to People International. You've seen that we've brought guests here from Egypt, from China, from Moldova and Georgia and Azerbaijan, and they've all come to us through this organization. Well, in, in 2011, our Los Angeles chapter were invited to adopt a partner chapter in Africa, and it happened to be in the chapter in Togo. In Togo, there has been a people-to-people -people chapter for the past three years, and it was founded by this man. His, his name is New Love, that's written as one word. His, his father gave him that name, he told me. New Love Bobson, a name that he chose himself because he had an older friend, Bob, that he admired. Atizo, New Love Bobson Atizo. New love goes about doing good works. And it was hard to believe the good works that he does. We wanted to see them for ourselves. This is where new love lives. And uh, this is what, where we lived while we were there. Uh, the second story of this building was added on recently. And there's a, uh, there are two apartments up there. Our apartment was at the back of the building, the other end of it, but this was the entrance through which we came. And you see a couple of typical African street sites there, the lady carrying uh, produce on her head, and the motorcycle, which is a, a common way of getting around town. You hail one of these guys who's driving up and down the street, bicker about the price and where you're going, and then you get on the motorcycle behind him, motorbike behind him, as I did with great fear. <laughs> Especially because my friends uh, did all the dealing and I got up behind this guy whose face I had never seen. <laughs> but that's how you get around. Now in our neighborhood, oh, here's this shot. Uh, a member of People to People is a 30-year-old woman named Chantal, that's a French given name, and she took a week off from her work and lived with us in our second bedroom, did all of our cooking. We never ate in a restaurant the entire time that we were in Togo. All of our meals were prepared at home by Chantal. Now, you, some of you know about Joan's pillowcase project, and she took some uh, sample pillowcases with her to give as gifts. There's Chantal has one, and New Love has received one as a gift. They named me that dress to match Chantal's dress. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't the first day. I don't think you'll see it again. But after we arrived, <laughs> Uh, Chantal asked her sister to make a dress for Joan that matched Chantal's dress, and that was, that was a gift. Oh, I forgot to mention, this was a gift, this suit, from New Love uh, about a year and a half ago, before he ever knew that I was going to Africa, but just as, as an attraction, <laughs> and because our uh, chapter had done some nice things for their chapter. But this is a gift. This is a map of Africa here on my belly button. Yeah, totally. And there are, uh, there are yeah. maps of Togo. All over? Oh, yeah. 
all over, all down this side, down this side. And the, the P's down this side are the logo of People to People. The People to People insignia is right there on the banner hanging from the podium. And you notice there's a little R at the bottom. And that stands for registered trademark. I'm sure you're familiar with this. <laughs> it's simple. Well, they had this suit custom made, and they incorporated the R. All over. We said, "What is the R?" All over the very top of it. He said, "It's part of the symbol." <laughs> <laughs> Street scenes. You saw a woman carrying vegetables. I was even more impressed to see a woman carrying a tub of water. Do you suppose there are four gallons in that tub? Uh, so that'd be 32 pounds she's carrying on her head. And we saw a number of women going the same direction. Apparently they were going to one place where they could get water for their families and carry it home for the dinner now. We stopped in an open-air uh, sewing shop. And you see the lady using a tre treadle sewing machine and uh, manufacturing clothes right there. In the back. Uh, we're not seeing quite all of the picture. Uh, okay. Um, I don't know what to do that. But, okay. Here's a picture. Um, we love shopping with this lady who was selling produce out on the street. And uh, she was a performer. She got into talking to us and showing off her vegetables. And we white folks with a camera drew a crowd. <laughs> And you can see Chantal over at the left enjoying this whole scene. Now, New Love, about three years ago, was out riding his bicycle through the countryside. You can see a bicycle there. And he happened upon the village of Amadenta. The translation of this big um, monumental sign is Civic Center of Amadenta. I don't know if this looks to you like a civic center, but um, New Love stopped off to see the school, and there was the headmaster. Now, the headmaster didn't take him seriously because he was just wearing a t-shirt. And he didn't believe that New Love was president of an organization that could actually help these poverty-stricken students. And um, uh, a week later, oh, there's a little something uh, that needs our attention. Um, and New Love came back a week later with school supplies to donate to these kids. The school receives, as a whole school with hundreds of children, about $100 worth of support a year from the federal government. The rest is what they can manage. And we see pictures of a teacher in front of a blackboard with chalk. And that's the visual aids they have in the school. And the kids are just sitting there listening with no pencils or paper. So we, our chapter sent a contribution for school supplies later. And uh, there was this presentation from his members. His members wear these blue and white t-shirts. Um, now, a few months later, they had a, a cave-in at the school. The thatched roof fell in, fell on three students who had to go to the hospital overnight. And the thatched roof was supported by these bamboo beams. Now, there's a strict rule in People to People that the sister chapter cannot ask for money. But they can mention as a need. And our chapter <laughs> asked, well, what would it cost to rebuild a better roof? And the price was going to be $1,075, I think. And we sent half of that. New Love raised the rest of the money uh, locally. And his members did the work of putting up a uh, corrugated iron roof. When we went to visit, the classroom looked like this. Uh, notice the walls don't need to be full height because it's hot all the time there and you want maximum air circulation. The, the walls just have to be high enough so that the kids aren't distracted while they're sitting at their desks. And this is the classroom that we helped restore, but 
the big success story of, of, the, of the trip. The desks were donated by, uh, some were donated by people to people chapter there in Lome, the capital, and the other desks were donated by the United Nations. So the kids were not on the floor anymore. But look at this picture. I didn't get as good a photograph as we need of what happened while our guys were building this room up on the right. Some Swiss charity stopped by and said, we can do that. We can do that better. And they built that three room, three, three classroom building at the back much more solid construction than we would ever, than our guys were thinking about. And you can see they even have lockable doors on the classrooms. That was an innovation in the village. So those three classrooms will be ready for the kids to use this fall. And while they were doing that, a Turkish charity stopped by and realized that those kids have no clean water to drink. They drilled a well and installed a modern hand pump. Now that's the way things ought to go. That's the way, the best possible outcome. That one small good deed leads to some big good deeds. And the kids are going to be much better off in the fall when they go back to school. Here's where new love lives. He lives in the building that's behind him. To get there, you go through this courtyard. It's not paved, and uh, that's the security system on the courtyard. This is his room. He lives in one room, which is divided with a curtain. And there's one window, one door. His friends have asked him. He told me his friends have asked him why he doesn't live in a better place. Well, the rent here is $21 a month. And if he has extra money, he doesn't want to spend it on rent. He spends it on things that are that matter. This is where uh, New Love goes to church. He can walk to his Roman Catholic church nearby. And his faith is very, very important to him. I did point out that in the room, um, room where he spends his time, there are several images of the Virgin Mary and of the, the, the heart, of the, the sacred heart. That's an important motivator for him. And uh, this church would seat, I would estimate, about a thousand people because that uh, it's a semicircular seating plan and a semicircular balcony. And he said it's full for masses. Another place that we visited with him was the orphanage. Orphanina is a French word for orphanage. And the name is Cador, which seems to be um, made out of the name of the owner, Dorcas. Action Center Dorcas, aid and help for uh, deprived children, disinherited, abandoned orphans of the street, for youth without work and for widows. And there are telephone numbers and an email number. We were invited to visit uh, because of people to people, Logo has been helping the orphanage. And that's the, the entrance door. Uh, we arrived. And here's the owner, Miss Dorcas, Mademoiselle Dorcas. Uh, she had brought the children from church to meet us for a half hour, and when we were finished, they went back to the church. That's why they're all particularly well dressed this, this day. And these are gifts that we bought them, a 50 kilo bag of rice, and uh, a carry-on. Uh, the laundry soap is the other, is it? The other day, this was rice, and the uh, a carry-on full of first aid and medical and sanitation supplies that we took with us from right here. This is Dorcas receiving a, one of Joan's bullet cases. And she told us that when she was still in school, she realized 
that she wanted. Uh, turn this off, please. Okay. She wanted to have an orphanage. That was her purpose in life. <coughs> and, um, and that's what she does. She's in her middle 30s. She goes out to villages, finds abandoned children, and brings them there to live. Here's somebody who's teaching the hokey hokey <laughs> <laughs> to these children. Then they decided to entertain us. The boys ran and got their, their drums. And there was a fourth boy on the bell. That's my cue. Right. We won't attempt drumming because their drumming is much too complicated for us. And they have lessons in drumming and lessons in tribal dancing. So that they have won prizes in dancing and in drumming and competitions. Um, and here are the kids dancing. And here's Mademoiselle Dorcas getting down. <laughs> <laughs> She's an enthusiastic dancer. So the butterfly on the wall is an adaptation of the flag of Togo. And there's a particularly artistic young man who lives there at the orphanage and he did all the painting all the walls in the courtyard. All the animals and butterflies. <laughs> and this is our sad farewell. Uh, when the taxi came to pick us up and go to the airport, New Love on the left and Chantal on the right uh, saying goodbye.